Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be installing a service rated 200 amp disconnect switch. Now the 2020 NEC requires this outside disconnect, service rated disconnect switch. Maybe it's not service rated, maybe it's just an emergency disconnect. However, this particular house, the panel used to sit behind this wall in this room, which used to be a garage, but now it's going to be a living space. So I was here about a month ago and I relocated all of the branch circuits and the main breaker panel into a hallway nearby, but it's no longer at the closest point of entrance. So now what we need to do when you don't have that panel immediately on the other side of the meter is add a service rated disconnect switch and a four wire to that panel, which we did, but of course there's a huge shortage of these 200 amp service rated disconnects. I was able to find one, shout out to Powers Electric in Maplewood, New Jersey. They happen to have one, it's a Siemens 200 amp, it's service rated, I'm delighted. And so is my customer that I'm able to finish this job. So for the time being, we just left this riser cable into this meter. It's, I'm not gonna say it's not safe, but it's not done right. And today we're gonna finish it and make it right. And we'll have a service rated disconnect and we'll relocate that panel and the job will be complete. So stand by, I hope you enjoy this video. So my first order of business here is to relocate this cable box because the size of the disconnect, it would be in the way. So there's only one wire going in and one wire going out. So this was pretty simple. I disconnect the cable wire inside the house and drill some new holes so that the box would no longer be in the way. Uh, you have to understand that I did not have the disconnect when I originally did this work. And so I kind of manipulated the system here with some wiring um, until I got that 200 amp disconnect. And that's what I came back today to do. So once that cable box is relocated, I'm able to restore the cable line and they'll have their internet back as soon as we restore power at the end of the day. All right, so I just pulled the, the meter. I'm sorry I didn't have the camera on, but shit happens. So the meter is out still live on the line side which is the top over here and the load has now been dead turned off all the circuit breakers inside the distribution panel so there's no load when I pull the meter so there's no arc now I'm going to go up onto the ladder and I'm going to disconnect the service drop from the utility so that I can work um, without any live walk conductors And that's how you cut out a service. It's really not that difficult. You just don't want to be a part of the circuit. And by not being a part of the circuit, you give it no load, obviously. <clears throat> and you cut the conductors one at a time. It's really not that difficult. But if you're not a professional, I wouldn't try to do this without the supervision of a professional. So just an FYI.
obviously I did not want that to happen. And there was a strap holding that riser to the home, to the house and it failed uh, once it had all the weight on it. And so it broke and it fell onto the deck, onto that staircase there. There was no damage to the staircase. And fortunately, there's nobody standing there, so nobody got hurt. So I feel like I really dodged the bullet there. Um, we all make mistakes, and that was one of mine that I shared with you, my audience here on YouTube. Definitely not something that happens often, um, but does happen occasionally. Uh, very rarely, I should say. So what I'm doing here is I'm pre-planning uh, how this disconnect is going to connect to the house and where the riser cable is going to come in from that hole in the bottom into the bottom of the disconnect switch. And uh, here you see that discrepancy in the vinyl side near a hole. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a weatherproof plate to cover that up so you no longer see the damage there. And we, of course, want to keep water from entering the inside of that vinyl siding. So I, if you've never seen this before, somebody showed this to me about 15 years ago and I've been using it ever since. Just looks like there might have been a box there sometime, but instead it's just a decorative cover that covers up the hole uh, so no water protrudes in behind the siding. Now I've attached my connector, my two inch connector to the back of the disconnect switch and I'll attach the disconnect switch to the house, to the structure, and then I'll push the riser cable from the electrical panel through the connector before terminating the conductors inside the disconnect switch. This is the main disconnect for this single family dwelling. The reason why we have a main disconnect is so that the fire department can turn off power to the rest of the home in the event of a fire. Obviously, water and electricity do not mix. So the firemen want to remove the electrical power in the dwelling before spraying water and injuring people or themselves. This is also the main disconnect for the home. So all of our bonding between the grounding electrodes and the system grounded conductor get bonded in this enclosure, which you'll see later on. Right now, I just landed that neutral conductor, which unfortunately you can't see too well. And now I'm landing the load side, the, the wires, that, the conductors that come from the panel to the load side of this 200 amp switch. Later in this video, you'll, you see, you'll see me connecting the wires to the line side of this 200 amp switch. But this is where all the bonding takes place inside this main enclosure. And the, reason, the main reason why we do this is to clear a fault as quickly as possible. Okay. It is important to make sure each one of the strands within this grounded conductor fit inside this terminal slot here. Uh, once you have found out that the conductor is small enough to fit in this terminal, then you want to terminate it. You never, ever, ever want to remove any of the strands of this conductor just to make it fit under the terminal. If that's the case, then you need a larger grounding lug. There is no question about that. That's a code violation and it puts people at risk who may get electrocuted because the ground fault didn't clear quick enough because the conductor was undersized. So don't do that. Always make sure you have the right size lug for the, prop, for the size of the conductor that you're using. Now I am identifying the grounded neutral conductor and I know some people like to use uh, a candy stripe. I like to make a solid white uh, conductor. So I use the tape and I make it solid. So there is no doubt you could and it would pass inspection if you just put one single piece of tape around there. But I don't think that's... Um, a good practice and I learned from a very good electrician 15 years ago when I worked for him uh, to do this make sure it's fully identified so you know exactly what it is there is no question it's just vinyl tape it doesn't cost a lot of money and it's a better installation the load side of the meter enclosure supplies power to the line side of the main disconnect
As you can see beneath the disconnect there are my grounding electroconductors. They were already run because this was an existing 200 amp service. All we did was relocate the panel. So the grounding electroconductors were sized properly and they were re-employed and terminated in the main disconnect. I'm using 200 amp SEU cable, which is service entrance conductors. These are aluminum conductors, uh, and the two hots are 4 odd aluminum, and the grounded neutral conductor is 2 odd aluminum. It was kind of a cold day, so the colder it gets, the less flexible the cable is. Not that it was cold. It actually was 75 degrees. I think it might have been cold in the morning. Because at the beginning of this video, you can see my breath as I'm talking. So, uh, this is about a month ago. This is today's November 21st as I'm editing in this video. And I think the uh, work was done on October 22nd, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, um, so here I am setting up the service entrance head. Uh, this is a lot easier to do on the ground rather than up on the ladder. So, that's why I do that. And what I'll do is I'll prepare the cable and I'll carry it up the ladder with me before attaching it to the house and then later terminating it inside the meter enclosure. Now, being that I'm using or reusing the 200 amp meter enclosure here, because uh, it was suffice for the system and it was a good condition, sometimes getting these parts back in place, not always the easiest thing here. So, on the top of this meter, we use what's known as a Myers hub. It usually comes with the meter, and I'm reusing the one that came with this one that has probably been here for about 20 years, I imagine. And uh, the old... Um, service riser was as you saw two inch PVC and we were going to reuse those conductors if we could and, and reinstall the PVC uh, but what they had done is use service entrance cable and sleeved it through the two inch PVC so while I started doing this job we shifted gears and we just st installed new service entrance cable instead of the PVC but now what I'm struggling to do here is to get this two inch um, this two inch service entrance connector to thread into the old Myers hub. It was difficult and it probably took me 20 or 30 minutes to get it in, uh, but it's in there and it's in there good. And the reason why we use a Myers hub is because it's supposed to keep the water from coming in. It's a, it's a connector that's kind of watertight, so to speak, if it's tight and done correctly. Terminating these conductors inside this meter enclosure is not the simplest thing to do. Um, four watt conductors are a little bit bigger than two watt copper for 200 amps, and the copper is actually much more easier to work with than the aluminum. But the aluminum costs less, uh, and it's just as good a conductor um, if installed correctly. Uh, I've taken classes on installing this, and I've sat through continuing education classes talking about it and the materials used and how to terminate it. So I feel like I'm an expert in terminating the aluminum um, service entrance conductors of this size. But it is more difficult. You have to add the uh, penetrox, or rather you don't have to add the penetrox, but I prefer to add the penetrox. 
And if that gets on your tools, it gets on your hands, it makes things slippery and makes it more difficult to work with. So every time I use the aluminum, I'm battling with that, but that's never going to change. Um, I'm still a fan. I would still endorse aluminum conductors for service entrance any day of the week, as long as it's installed correctly. Now that all the work on the ground is done, I'm up on the ladder and I'm tying in the service. I like to use these 4 odd aluminum um, butt splices with the 3 8 hex head tool to tighten them down. I tighten down the ground first and then each of the hots. Um, I never do this with the meter installed in the meter enclosure uh, so, that, so I don't accidentally shock myself with one of the conductors as I'm working on the other one. Uh, and then as soon as I'm done with this, I will wrap it with rubber tape and then with vinyl tape. And then it's up to the utility company if they want to reconnect at another point. Before you go and put the meter in, you want to make sure that you have 240 volts between each leg, 120 volts to ground on each leg. And then, of course, I like to check the load side for continuity to make sure there's no shorts anywhere. I had an experience one time, and we'll leave it at that. But once you do that, uh, delicately put the meter in the load side first, then to the line side. You may want to put some Penetrox on there if you have a hard time getting it in the meter slots. But once that meter's in, I like to check the load side to make sure power's going through that meter. Uh, before putting the cover on and uh, that just about wraps up this video thank you guys for watching uh, if you haven't already please hit that like button hit the notification bell and of course hit the subscribe button we'll see you on the next one thanks for watching